Uh, my name is Paul Diani. I'm one of the youth directors here. That was a recap of our summer mission trip that we took two weeks ago. We had about uh, 28 students and five leaders. Honestly, what I could say is it was an amazing group of students, an incredible group of leaders, and an ama just an awesome trip. So it was just really amazing. Tonight, or today, we're going to do a little recap, some stories of some of the students. Um, it was amazing. Honestly, the video, it could go on for hours. It's incredible. So if uh, we had talked to you earlier, if you guys want to come up on stage, Nathan, and if Tiana's here, I didn't see her, but if she's here, you can come up. There she is. Tyra, if you want to come up too. I mean, you made the video. It was great. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. You guys can come up here. And Adrian. Yeah, sorry, we don't. All right. So we just asked some of the students to come up and uh, share some memories and some stories that they had. Again, it's, it's five days, and we go down there. We join the Vineyard of Cincinnati Church, which is an incredible church. They have a ministry called the Healing Center, and they reach out to the entire city of Cincinnati in multiple ways with food, jobs, housing. And we just come and partner with what they're doing down there with about 400 other teenagers and it's just an incredible time. So we had some questions for these young students. So Katie, you want to start off? All right. So we do have a couple questions. They already know what they're going to say. But <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to ask you one at a time. But Tori, uh, what was your favorite part? You've been to SOS how many times now? Four. Four. So what was your favorite part this year? Um, I mean, I like the outreaches. They were fun. But um, I was on the toilet, and they called my name because I won an iPad. And it was... <laughs> And I don't think I've ever ran so fast as they said. <laughs> I've, I've washed my hands. I did. I did. <laughs> um, um, because I knew I wanted something for college, and I really didn't want to have to take out student loans. And as soon as they called my name, I ran out there so fast, I don't want them to give it away. And I ran in there screaming like I won the lottery, but it's fine. It was cool. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how this year did you experience God? Um, I had a really big spiritual breakthrough on one of the last days of SOS. I had so much bitterness in my heart and like and I finally let it go and I got prayer for it and it's like something that I don't like hold on to I don't have any more grudges anymore for like people in different like situations so. it's amazing you can step back all right so this is Angelina this is your first year at SOS right so what was your favorite part um, my favorite part was going to the retirement home because they just all had like a lot of experience in life and hearing their stories was like really great and just everything that they've been through. And then how did you experience God personally this year? Um, this year I actually like felt God for the first time because I never had that happen before. I never knew that he was like actually there and just going one of the mornings I just like knew that he was and like since then, it's just been really different for me. That's amazing. That's awesome. And Morgan, this is your second time at SOS, right? And what was your favorite part this year? Um, my favorite part was, like, putting on a carnival for the kids at this, like, community, like, recreation center because they were just, like, so loving and, like, loved having us there. And it was just, we did games. We threw darts and stuff. It was cool. Yeah. And how did you experience God this year at SOS? Well, so for a while, um, I've wanted to, like, I know that I wanted to teach inner city kids and, like, teach them art, um, and so going to Cincinnati, we're doing a lot of inner city stuff, and, like, doing that two times in a row, I'm like, this is actually what God is calling me to do, not what I want to do, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. This is Adrian. He's awesome. First year. Adrian, what is a uh, really quick uh, favorite memory? From this year at SOS? Um, favorite memory, I would just say, like, probably going to the retirement home, like Angelina said, and just speaking to all the different people and hearing about their lives and what they did, and just trying to help us get through our young lives and us just talking to them. Awesome. And then, uh, what's one way you, or what's a one takeaway from SOS this year? Um, a one takeaway I would say was that SOS isn't just. A youth trip, it shouldn't just be a week long. It shouldn't just be a summer of service. It's the way we should live our life because like we were told when we were there, to be the greatest in God's kingdom, you must be the greatest servant. 
So it was never about you. It's always been about serving the person beside you, giving back. Oh. So good. Amazing. Awesome. Well, if you guys want to hear more, I'm sure they would love to share more with you, uh, all these students over here. So give it up. Round of applause for all these kids dedicating a week of their summer. All right, cool. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, special thanks to all of you who just helped them make that trip possible. We had that special offering on Youth Vision Sunday, and that subsidized them going, and that is an outstanding trip and a, just a wonderful thing that we get to do with our young people. So I thank you for sending them. Really, really good. So we're calling today like Summer Mission Review because uh, we got to hear a little bit about the students in summer of service. Also thought we could take some time this morning, talk a little bit about the Brazil trip, and then I'll just close it up with a short passage uh, about uh, outreach and what God's Word says about that. But I'd like to invite our Brazil team up that went uh, on this year's trip. It would be Rob Gibson, Kathy Trivett, Chip Richardson, myself. Come on up, come on up here. Kathy. We had, a, we had another one on the trip with us, Randy Osborne, but he decided to stay down in Brazil. He's never coming back. I don't know. He's living in a jungle. That happens on some mission trips. You lose one or two, but no, actually, he's on vacation. He thought since he was down there, he might as well just stay. He's got students from his teaching career that are down there, so he's visiting them and just traveling around Brazil, so he's not back for another week or two. But I thought we could take some time this morning and kind of ask some questions and see some pictures, get a feel for what was going on there. So I'm going to start with you, Rob. You hold this, and uh, maybe the first thing is, so Rob, is this your, would this be your first mission trip? It was my first trip. Okay, and why did you decide to go on this? Well, initially I heard about it and was said, hey, maybe you should think about doing this. So I thought about it, prayed about it for months. And I was almost not going to go. And then Dale Geisinger at our Rit Fest, uh, he asked if I was going. I said, well, I don't know, Dale. He goes, well, think about it. I said, okay. I'm I mean, I have been thinking about it. And he says, and I'm like, what do I have to give? I and mean, I'm such a new Christian. I'm only like a three-year-old Christian, like an infant Christian, you know. I'm like, what do I have to give? He goes, Maybe it's not what you had to give, but it's going to be what you're going to get from it. And Dale was spot on. So. Wow. So All I went. Right. Yeah, okay, hold the mic. So I got a second question. What's going on in, uh, in this picture here, Rob? Uh, this is myself and Rosarado. Next uh, picture, I mean, the pull up. Next the, picture. Well, oh, yeah, no. there you go. Yeah, what's happening there? Uh, that's what we call the grab and growl session. Uh, that's a water filter coming from a canoe. I'm guessing the filter weighs about 200 pounds. And uh, these guys from Brazil, they had the technique. And, and man, they're strong. Wow. So I just happened to grab one. That's what we're doing. Just getting ready Think to take about a filter. Rob. He, you jumped right in. Rob was handling those filters. They're 200 plus pounds. Yeah, and loading them on those really cool little boats. That's a nice dock. <laughs> That's a nice dock. That was a really nice dock. That was one of the better ones. Yeah. So yeah, really great. And uh, loading those on and then delivering those. Let me jump over to Kathy. Kathy, this would this be your first mission trip? Yes. And then why did you decide to go? For the purpose, the adventure. Yeah, and um, we just take for granted that we have unlimited water, and uh, it's they're supplying a basic need, and it was an honor. Okay. To be here. All right. Let's look at this here. <laughs> That's Kathy sitting on the filter there in the middle. That's how they get delivered. <laughs> Okay, so Kathy, what, what, tell us about that. What's going on there? Yeah, so like you said, we're delivering the filter. Um, there's probably 800 pounds in there, at least, in that little boat. Yeah. Um, and that was the easy part. You get to the docks, and uh, there's no docks. There's marsh. Marsh. So. And that's, like, really safe. That has, like, life preservers. It's oh, been yeah. inspected by yeah, the Coast Guard. Yeah. Absolutely. You can see it rides about one inch above the water line there. <laughs> canoe, they call it a canoe. It's got to be a, what, 500 years old oh, thing. Probably, yeah, and yeah. yeah, okay. So, uh, but Kathy jumped right in. She's incredible. She jumped on a boat and she was delivering them. I was impressed. All right, turn it over to Chip. So let's see, Chip, what's going on in this picture here? 
This was awesome. So we pulled up to this spot. We were going to do some church ministry. There's a couple that our missionary Richie knows, and they lead a small group in this area of the river. And one guy was, said, I'm going to build a church. Yeah. I'm going to build a vineyard church here because we were having a service that night. Well, he didn't have any floor in at all, and we just all jumped in, and we got the floor put in, and we had a church service that night. Oh, man. That... I mean, really, when I see that picture, that's like, that, that's a moment in time I'll never forget. You, you got to be part of a brand new vineyard church starting in the Amazon and helping to build it. Really, really, just perfect timing and incredible opportunity. Mm -hmm. All right, what about the next picture here? So we have our missionary down there, Richie Boutsier. He's the one who does the water filter ministries. And this is his church that he built Last year when we met him, he was just putting the finishing touches on it. So it's, it looks, it is as big as it looks. It's all concrete. Um, so that's his church. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's planting churches on the river, and he's also pastoring a church that he planted that he's hoping to turn over to a local pastor there. Uh, he's got about, is that 150, 200 people attending his church on Sunday? Uh, really great, great ministry going on. That's in the city of Portel, so... All right, how about over to Rob? So, Rob, uh, let's see, what's going on in this picture here? Um, so, this is at a, a house or a hut. I'm going to look at it. Uh, I was just giving my story that night to uh, some people that lived in that area. And uh, that's Richie to my left, and he was interpreting my story. Yeah. So, so one of the things about going on a mission trip that we try to do is everybody gets a chance to preach or share their testimony and sometimes it's a little challenging a little scary but uh it's a great opportunity and and you know when you're in other cultures you have an interpreter the picture is not that great but that's if you could see the things they're living in like you said rob huts probably call them huts yeah uh okay let's see and then uh so how about one takeaway uh so what, what what would be a highlight of the trip or a takeaway rob other than that takeaway right there <laughs> tell them what that is yeah so that's uh that's the sand that they put in the filter yeah, i'm guessing it weighed 80 pounds i don't know 100 pounds something like that no i think it weighed 500 pounds rob okay. <laughs> jeez it was so heavy <laughs> so um for this brief moment i'm struggling <laughs> he was struggling yeah um how about a takeaway though but the takeaway so that's my struggle for just a moment and these people struggle like that every day. Mm. So my takeaway is just how fortunate and blessed we are here in America. I said, we won the lottery. But just be able to help these people out. And for that moment in time, I was struggling, but again, just realizing they struggle like that every day. So yeah, that's takeaway. Yeah, we, it was our two weeks. That's their life down there, no doubt about it. All right, Kathy, how about uh, what's going on in this picture here? That's where the church was, right. um, what you were just talking about. And this lady, when we pulled up, she was building a dock from her house to the church and then helping her husband. So she not only had her work with her children and her home, and then she was also doing a man's job and just working nonstop. So I was saying a prayer for her that she would get the help that she needed when she needed it. She wouldn't be overwhelmed. She was just a very strong spirit. Uh, that place was incredible. First of all, there's Richie's boat. You can see the boat that he takes up the river. But as you saw, when they were delivering the filters, they have to take it from the big boat to the little boats because the river gets narrower and stuff. But they carry the filters on that one until they get as far as they can go. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this was the church that you saw the picture. Uh, Chip was, and everybody was getting help, help to build. All right, and then, uh, so if someone wants to go on the trip, so what can they expect as far as like jungle hikes and beautiful paths and scenery and stuff? There's some beautiful scenery there and hikes and stuff. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That just, <laughs> it, it was so amazing how they, when we went on this walk, it was probably about three hours and two hours into it, we're all really thirsty. And they cut the spine from a tree and we all drank the water and um, we just felt so much better after that. And well, was, Chip wouldn't. Well, Chip, yeah, Chip I didn't would want to not. throw you under the bus. Rob really. and Kathy, we drank it because we were dying. Yeah. We almost died. But <laughs> Chip just toughed it out there. But what about these paths here, these little boards? I mean, I, wow. This is kind of how some of the homes 
that we delivered the filters to, this is what they had to walk across. And then there were fire ants and, you know, no crocodiles, oh, but yeah. stuff like that. And they're all flip-flops, barefoot, yeah. you know. I posted some pictures. People said, wear boots. I said, no, nah, they're pretty much barefoot flip-flops out there. That's what they wear. So, <laughs> All right, Kathy, uh, takeaway? It was overwhelming, um, just the thousands of filters that they put in, um, the thousand more that are needed, and just the spirit of the people there, the generous spirit and happy and um, how this fresh water is making their lives so much better. Yeah, really, really great. Hand it over to Chip. Chip, what do we have here? So someone wants to go on a trip. It's not a, it's first class accommodations. You told us everything was air conditioned, soft beds. What's the trip like? Trip? Well, the travel agent was a little misleading <laughs> when he said I would have my own room on the yeah. boat. Yeah, your own box. They gave you a little box so to get in. So when we fly into Brazil, we, we fly into the biggest city we'll ever see once we get there is a city called Belém. And then we get on to what's called a line boat. So Richie said, do you want to get some rooms or do you want to sleep in the hammocks? And I said, get us some rooms because we'll sleep in the hammocks for two weeks. Well, that was the room. Um, I'm on the second I bunk. couldn't sleep in it. It was, it was just about so two small. and a half feet wide oh. and five and a half feet long and like that. Yeah. So, um, stand up in the thing. Man. Everybody else slept in these hammocks. So there's about 300 plus people on this boat. And the way you see the hammock spaced apart there is before everybody else got there. Yes. So one of those is Rob's. And I remember sitting with Rob when other people were coming and the hammocks are touching each other. Oh, absolutely. So that's how close it is. Yeah. You know, um, and it's so it's an 18 hour boat ride to get to the city of Portel where Richie's at. Um, but it's an adventure. It is an it's adventure. It's a lot of fun. So, yeah. yeah. I think I went to sleep, and there was just one person next to me in the hammock, and I woke up. There was someone above me, someone below me, and the other hammock was on the side, and the little baby kept kicking me, and it was like, okay, this is, this is relational. This is relational. All right. Tell us about the Vineyard family down there, Chip. So these two guys, uh, the guy on my right is Diego, and then the other guy is Hamon. These guys are, I love these guys. They are servants till the end. They are workhorses for the ministry down there. Um, Diego is with another vineyard church north of Portel, and he came down to join us. And then Hamon is Richie's right-hand man. So he is the captain of the ship when Richie's not on there. And he just, I mean, these guys, you need something done, these guys will do it for you. They've got hearts of gold, and they are workers. Yeah. So, and they're a part of our vineyard church family. Yeah. They're nationals. They are awesome people. So great to be a part of what they're doing. All right. Well, then just one couple, couple more pictures here. Let's see. My takeaway. Oh, yeah. There's my takeaway. Yeah. That's the one and only filter I <laughs> delivered because uh, I didn't want to die. And the boards were creaking as I walked on them. I went real slow. Notice I'm barefoot there because, you know, that's just the way you do it in the jungle. But I will say this. A couple quick things going on the trip really helped me. I understand now why we're delivering those filters. This, these filters, 200 pounds plus another 200 plus pounds of rock and pebbles and sand, when it's delivered to the house, 400 plus pounds. Richie has been through all sorts of different filters and has decided this is the best one for a number of reasons. One, it won't get stolen. It won't get taken. It won't be used for other things. Once it's put in those houses, no one is moving the filter. It will be there till the end of the world or till the house collapses, but it's permanent. So that's why. And then the other thing is these filters are um, no maintenance. And so they've looked at wells and they've looked at handheld filters and all kinds of filters. But we went to, uh, what, two or three houses that had wells at least? And, 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 and they would tell us, oh, my well broke last year, two years ago. We don't have the money to fix it. So well-meaning ministries went in, put wells. They break. They're useless. These things work on gravity. They're permanent. They will last forever. They never need to be changed. The way it's set up, it's bio, what do you call it, a bio? Bio, bio sand filter. Bio sand filters works by gravity. They last forever. He actually went and helped... Uh, regenerate one for some people they just have to stir the water but 
it, it is really incredible. And so, so really my one takeaway is I just want to say thank you to all of you who contributed to this. We, we gave almost a little under uh, uh, $26,000 for the delivery of these filters, 133 filters. He's delivered probably half of them already. He delivers year-round. But I got to go, and I wanted to go just to make sure everything was legit and, you know, no, no waste and anything like that. And I can tell you there's no waste and it's legit. But, but the takeaway was we really, really are helping these people. Really. They have no drinking water. They are drinking Amazon River water, and they think it's okay, but their children get sick and the parents get sick. We really helped them and gave them clean drinking water, and I just want to thank all of you. It was a wonderful, wonderful trip. So in closing, though, Chip, people might be interested. If you are interested in going and you have a thought in your head right now that I think I might want to go, then you probably should go. Um, we will have a, so there's another picture, that's, oh, that's Pastor Dave and I delivering a water filter. That was right before we almost capsized in a rainstorm. Yeah, yeah, almost went to heaven that I day. I saw yeah. Pastor Dave get scared. <laughs> he was behind me, so he didn't see me. Well, I was praying in tongues, I was praying in tongues, you know. Wow. <laughs> but anyways, there's going to be an interest meeting today after the service upstairs in the community room. So if you're interested and you just want some basic information, we will be going in June of 2019. Haven't got the dates nailed down just yet, but I can get you all of the basic information and answer any questions that you might have uh, after the service today upstairs in the community room. Yeah, and, and, or, or else if you can't make it today, mark something a bulletin, Chip will get a hold of you. Yeah. I will say this, a great adventure. You, <laughs> look, you want to do something, go in the Amazon. This is an adventure, but it's spiritually driven. Wonderful trip. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, team. Really appreciate it. So I'm just going to finish up with a short devotional. If you have your Bibles, uh, open to Matthew 28, uh, the last portion. Uh, it's called the Great Commission. I just want to read this to you and just share just a few thoughts and uh, hopefully kind of uh, awaken some, some uh, feelings inside about the kingdom of God. So this is uh, Matthew 28. And this is Jesus at the very end of his ministry. He's died. He's risen from the grave. He's getting ready to depart into heaven. And he, uh, the last part of chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the ages. Amen. So, so we're, this is called the Great Commission. Uh, most of us are familiar with this passage of Scripture, and uh, we refer to it as the Great Commission. But, but to be honest with you, I think probably most of us, when we read this, probably don't think of it as the Great Commission. If we're honest, we probably think of it as the Great Burden. Like this. Thank you, God. Now I have to go out and be a Jesus freak and tell everybody about Jesus and and look weird, and okay, I'll do it because that's what you want me to do. The Great Commission is not the great burden. And the, the thing I think that, that sometimes maybe ha ha this happens sometimes is we read a scripture, but we kind of read our own feelings into the scripture, and we miss the point of what God is really saying. I, I just had a chance to listen to my brother Phil's sermon uh, on Father's Day while we were down in Brazil, and actually, if you have not had a chance to hear that sermon, that is an outstanding piece of work that Phil delivered. But in that sermon, he talked about how he, un he read a scripture for many years of his life and then finally got God's perspective on what the scripture was saying and how it changed his life. And, and I believe that happens a lot of times, and it's something that God's been trying to work in my heart, is just getting an understanding, like, what is God's perception? What does God see here? And can I see things through his eyes? And when you get those revelations, it changes your life. It changes the scripture. It's like, oh, now I get it. Like there's this thing God's been working in my heart, it's been months now, but uh, uh, a while back, somebody that I love dearly was doing some things really wrong, and I found myself frustrated, I found myself angry, I found myself mad, and I'm just trying to process it in my head, and I'm, 
sitting in a living room. I'm reading. I'm praying. I feel the Holy Spirit just show up, and he starts working with me, and he says, you know, what's going on? I say, I'm really mad. You know, this is happening, and, and uh, you know, what, why are you mad? I hear the Holy Spirit. Why are you mad? And I say, well, because they're messing up, and, and uh, you know, that, that's not right. And then I hear him ask again, like, yeah, but why are you mad? Why are you mad? And I said, well, because if they keep doing that, their life is going to be screwed up and uh, they're going to miss out on your blessings and they're not going to get the abundant life that you really promised them. And then I heard, clear as I've ever heard the voice of God, something like this. Well, Dave, I'm sad, not mad. And it was like, oh my gosh, I just got struck by lightning. I'm sad, not mad. Sort of like, why don't you try being sad instead of mad? And, and it's just like getting God's perception, his perspective on things changes the way you look at it. You start looking at it through God's eyes. So like, like um, you know, people don't get the understanding of the power of forgiveness. They're not forgiving. Well, rather than being mad, I'm sad. Uh, people don't, uh, some people never get the revelation on the uh, principle of tithing. Well, rather than being mad, I'm just sad. They're missing out. Um, people uh, don't know the incredible blessing of being a part of a church family and coming to church on Sunday. Rather than being mad at them, maybe I ought to have God's heart and feel the sadness. They're missing out. Or, or people don't read God's word because they just don't know the wisdom for, for living everyday life. They don't know that it's there. Well, rather than being sad, mad, why don't I have God's heart and go, man, I'm so sad, they're missing out. It's getting God's perspective on things changes the way you understand God's word. Well, that's what this passage needs to happen. That's what needs to happen with this passage for us. What is Jesus saying when he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations? Is he telling you, you have to do this. You have to do this. Well, I, I'm not so sure that's the perspective that Jesus had. I think it's more like this. Rather than a have to, it's a get to. And I'm telling you, just switching a word or two and looking at a scripture will totally transform the way you understand that scripture. Instead of a have to, this is a get to. And when you begin to look at it through the eyes of God, you realize, oh my gosh, this isn't a burden. This is an invite. Dave, if you want your life to have meaning and purpose, I'm commissioning you to help me work with me. Lo, I'm with you always. I'm commissioning you to help make the world a better place. I'm inviting you to be a part of advancing God's kingdom. Now that's, that's a get to, folks. That's a get to. But, but if you read this and go, oh, you know, I, I just don't like sharing and I don't like witnessing. Like, it, it, you, you need God's eyes. You know, you don't have to. Does he really need us? Really, does God really need us? No. Look, he could do this without you, man. It's, it's this. I'm inviting you to be a part of something that is awesome. You get to live a life of meaning and purpose by advancing God's kingdom on this earth. That's an invite. And when he says go, so the go can be looked at a lot of different ways. The go could be you go every morning when you go to work. You're being sent. That's the purpose. That's the calling to help improve the world by advancing God's kingdom. When you go to school, when you go shopping, when you go to a party, it's this understanding, I'm living a life of purpose because I've accepted the invite that he's, he's given us. I'm commissioning you. He goes, I have all power. I'm the one. I have uh, the anointing of God and I'm giving it to you. You can work with me. You're invited. It's an invite. The going happens every day. But, but I think in this going, since we're talking today about mission, there is this thing about taking a set time and going to do something special, going to another city and being a part of, a, of an outreach where you reach out to people that are hurting or, or going to another culture, uh, going to another country. There's something special about that. And, and I think there's, 
there's, a, there's give and take on that. Like Rob was saying, it's not just what you're giving, but it's also what you're receiving. So, uh, you know, if you go on a foreign mission trip, first of all, I would say you, you ought to really be open to that. There's something special about it. But when you go, first of all, I, I think something happens to you. Like, I come back from these trips, and it's like, oh, I just, I want to I wanna live a I wanna live different life. I want to be... I want to just serve God more. There's something you get when you go on these trips. The other really cool thing, though, is whether you realize it or not, when there are people who are foreign missionaries, so Richie's from Canada. He's been down in Brazil 20 years. He's raising his family there. He loves having people from America and Canada come down because it's refreshing to him. We're, we're like what that proverb says, as cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a foreign country. We, we're just... Whether you think you are or not, you're a blessing to a missionary and you help him sustain his mission or their mission to stay there. They, you are a blessing. So I know sometimes in my mind I've struggled with this cost analysis. Yeah, but it's costing all this money to go down there. I could do better by just sending the money for filters. Well, well yeah, that's true too, but it's not like better because really people do need to go down there to encourage that missionary. Then I'd say the third thing that happens when you're sent, when you go on a dedicated time, I think there's an anointing that goes with you and you get this opportunity to preach, to pray for people. And, and here's the thing, when you come from America, whether we realize it or not, you are a celebrity. And here's your chance to be a real celebrity. You know, like, like in America, uh, I'm nothing. But hey, when I go, especially to a third world country, I'm a celebrity. And if you can handle that in your mind and understand this is an opportunity, I will use the fact that I'm a celebrity to be anointed by God to speak into people's lives. They will listen to you because you're from America. Well, why not use that for God? So anyway, just in closing, I just want to encourage you, first of all, as you're reading Scripture, just if you're struggling with what's being said there and it's just unsettling, probably at the root of that is maybe we don't have God's perspective, what's actually being said there. And just ask God, could you open my eyes here? Is there a different way to look at this? Because the scripture should be encouraging, should be a blessing. And I think this passage in Matthew 28, the Great Commission, is a great invite. This is not a have to, folks. This is a get to. We get to live a life of meaning and purpose every single day. We're sent by God when we go to work when we go shopping, when we go to school, we're part of the kingdom of God. And then just an encouragement, you might want to really give some thought to sometime in your life going out on some kind of short-term mission, even if it's to another city where we're helping people that have been through some disaster. There's something about setting aside a designated time and dedicating yourself. There's a give and take that happens there that, that, that probably won't happen if you don't, don't do that. But it really, I'm telling you, when you do those trips, it really adds to a life of adventure. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up. Well, Father, I thank you for, uh, I thank you, first of all, for our church family here. It, it is just so wonderful, God, to be a part of a family that, that uh, really does want to make a difference. And I thank you for the offerings that we took in Easter. And as we get to hear from our students that were down in Cincinnati, as we get to hear from our Brazil team, God, that we're, we're making a difference. And, and I thank you, Jesus, you invited us. <laughs> us. You invited us. Each one of us. You invited us to be a part of making a difference, advancing your kingdom. God, I pray for a refreshing vision for each one of us to understand that when we get up in the morning and we go to work or go to school or go shopping or go wherever, God, that it's that sending part that you're sending us and you've invited us. I pray you protect us from this misunderstanding of scriptures, thinking it's commands that are burdensome. They're, they're commissionings, they're, they're invites, they're get-to, they're opportunities, God. And I just pray you open our hearts and minds that we, we look for the opportunity to live lives of purpose where we encourage, pray for, reach out, invite people to be a part of your kingdom, God. Thank you, Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen. We have our ushers come forward. We'll take our offering. So we're going to close with a song. 
the end of our service, we always try to just invite you to come forward if you want to come up and just close out with a time of coming up and worshiping him. But also sometimes maybe you just need to do a little business with God. Maybe there's something you really need to talk to him about. Sometimes it's good to come forward and pray. I just uh, got a sense, though, as I was preaching this morning, I just sensed that, you know, there's probably some of you here that need a refreshing you know, your career, maybe you've been on your job for 10, 5, 10, 15 years and maybe just kind of forgetting that what's your purpose. I feel like maybe the Holy Spirit just wants to refresh you to understand it's, it's being sent every day. That's your purpose. It's being sent every day. I also sense there's some people in transition, you know, really uh, switching jobs and trying to make a decision, you know, a decision on a career and, and sometimes maybe you get confused in your head that maybe your career that job is really your purpose for living. It, it, it kind of is, but it really isn't. Your purpose for living is, is accepting the call of Jesus to be a part of his team to advance the kingdom. Maybe sometimes we've got to get that clear in our hearts and minds. And, I don't know, maybe some of you just feel like you need a clarity on direction in your life. So, so if, my, if, if I'm not talking to you, just hold your hand up. I just want to pray right now. That you'd get that refreshing, that God would clarify that vision all the way over here. Hold your hands up. We're just going to pray for you all the way back here. Hold your hands up. Hold your hands up. If you're standing by somebody who's got their hands up, let's just stand next to them. Let's just pray. You know, I believe that when, when like, the Holy Spirit's inspiring me to say certain things, I think it's because he really wants to work on that right now. So let's believe if you've got your hand up. If you're needing that refreshing, if you're needing that vision, if you're needing the clarity, that the Holy Spirit will give it to you today. That's the way it works. You pray and you can believe God will speak to you. So Holy Spirit, right now, I pray for each person whose hand is up. God, they're asking for clarity and direction, for a renewing, a refreshing of a vision. God, I pray that in this clarity, you help each of them, each of them understand that the real purpose being a part of advancing your kingdom wherever we go, God. And I pray right now you refresh them. And God, if there's any misunderstanding about the have to or the get to, I pray this morning you clarify that, God. It's an invite. God, th th those that have their hand up right now for a, a direction about their job, I pray, God, this week, clearly you speak to them. They hear your voice. They see the doors open. They accept it. They walk through it get that peace taken care of. We pray these things right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to close with a song. If you want to come up and worship, you're welcome to do so.
been restored to the love of God. I thought it was the end, but it's just begun. You, my Jesus. My strength and fortress, my hope and purpose, you are all this and pronounce a blessing from the scriptures. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. That ends our service this morning. <laughs>